Hey guys, this is the first in a four-part tutorial series where I'll be going over how to use the automatic in-betweening feature of Open Tunes. Basically what I'm going to do is show you how to take one key pose and a second key pose and create a series of in-betweens between those poses automatically using Open Tunes. In the first part, I'll be going over how to draw your first key pose effectively in preparation for in-betweening. In the second part, I'll be going over how to make your second key pose effectively in order to facilitate in-betweening. And then I will show you how to create the in-betweens using the automatic in-betweening feature of OpenTunes. In the third part, I'll go over how to clean up all the in-betweens you have created. And the fourth part will be a series of time lapses where I show you examples of the application of these various features and techniques that I share with you. This animation you see playing is the animation we will create using automatic in-betweening. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started on the process of using the automatic in-between feature on vector shapes in Open Tunes. So what I've got here is a raster layer with some sketches on it. These are basically my two key poses and I want the character to move from this pose to this pose, and I'm going to do that using the automatic in-between feature of Open Tunes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this column by using the Edit tool. And it's important, I think, at this point to distinguish between the Edit tool and the Select tool. The Edit tool, you're editing the column. You're not editing the image. With the Select tool, you're editing the actual image as it would show in your lever level strip. I think this is an important distinction because I see people sometimes mixing up what these two different tools do. So for instance, if I was to take my edit tool and scale this image like this, what I've done is I've actually scaled the column, not the image. So you can see the image is still fine. If I make another column here, make this one disappear, you can see that the image is still normal and same if I go into the ink and paint however if I use the select selection tool and I say I grab this and I shrink it this way see now what I've done is I haven't edited the column I've edited the actual image if we go into ink and paint we can see that the image is now skewed so that I think I just wanted to kind of get that out there because there seems to be some confusion as to what the difference is between these two tools and when we should be using them. I'll do a more in-depth tutorial on these two tools and when to use them at a later time. All right, let's get back on track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the edit tool and I'm just going to position my image that I'm going to work on right in the center here. All right, now what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and create a new level for our vector drawing. So now what I'm going to do is when you're creating your vectors, your vector drawings, it's best to use as few points as possible and to keep track of those points and where you're using them and where they end up. And I'll show you what I mean by that. But to start, let's go ahead and create the body and the legs and the arms. And for that, I'm going to just do a rectangle. All right. Now I'm actually going to bring down the opacity of the background drawing just because it's a little dark. And let's go ahead and bring the opacity of our vector drawing up a little bit. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the control point editor tool. And this, like the selection tool, edits the actual image itself. It has nothing to do with the columns. So I'm going to go ahead and select my point, control point editor tool, select my object. And when I selected it, you see, I can now see the control points and the lines in between. And you can select a line and manipulate it this way. Oops. And then you can also take the uh, little, I forget what these are called, but you can pick these up and 
manipulate them to get a little bit more control. Another cool thing you can do is if you hold Alt and click on one of your uh, white control points, you can either, it will either give birth to these little objects if they don't exist, right? Or if they already exist, you can hold Alt and click and it will take them away and make this a sharp corner. Also, if we take these little anchors, I think that's what they're called, and you can see how they don't, they aren't connected to each other. If we hold Alt and click one of them, that will now connect them to each other so we can get a nice smooth corner and you can mani manipulate them as you see fit. At the same, in the same way, you can hold Alt, and if they're already connected, you can hold Alt, click the point, and drag it independently. And then you can let go of Alt, and, and you're able to manipulate these independently. But again, if they're already independent, and you hold Alt and click one, they're going to connect to each other again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of those anchor points by holding Alt and clicking my control point. And I'm going to do that again on all my control points, so I have a nice rectangle again. I just kind of wanted to show you that neat feature for editing control points. All right, now what I'm going to do is looking at this body and the legs, I'm going to have this all be one object. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a point for each shoulder, and then obviously a point for the armpit right here, and then a point for the wrist. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hold control, and you can see a little plus sign pops up next to the mouse cursor. And what that means is that it's going to add a control point. So I'm holding control and I'm gonna click. There we go, it adds a control point. I'll do another one for the wrist. I'll do the same on the other side. Now I can pull this point out to the wrist, and I can pull this point out to the wrist, and then we can sort of manipulate things to make it nice and smooth. And there we go, now we have the arms. So the next thing I'm going to do is looking at the lower half of the body, I think all I really need to do is have a point for each ankle and then a point for the groin. So one thing I want to do is these lines look a little too thick right now. I want to make them a little thinner. You can use the uh, pump tool to con control the uh, thickness of a certain field. We're not going to do that right now. I'm going to undo that and show you another neat trick, which is if you click the selection tool, select your line, your vector line, and you get this little uh, icon, I guess, which shows up right here in the bottom right. And you see that when you hover over it, you get the pump icon, the pump cursor, I guess. You can go ahead and click and move down or up to control the thickness of the entire line. So I'm going to bring it down to about there. Go back to my point edit tool. And I think that's pretty good for the body. So let's go ahead and add the hands. I'm going to take our geometry tool, leave it on rectangle, and I'm going to just make a rectangle with one of the corners at the wrist. I'll go ahead and go to my selection tool and bring the thickness down a little bit so it's closer to the thickness of the rest of the body and I will select my control point edit tool and so we'll put this one point right at the wrist so that looks pretty good for the fist now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the selection tool select it control C control V to copy and paste and we'll move it over here and here's a neat trick with your selection tool and the object selected, you have all this information up here. And these two right here are the scale on the horizontal axis and the scale on the vertical axis. Now, obviously I want this hand to be flipped. So one way to do it is I could just go like this and sort of approximate, that looks like it's about the same, right? Undo that, or you can come up here and add a negative to 100% and it will flip the object automatically.
for the pupils, I'm just going to take the brush tool and just do little dots. And that will work as our eyes. Let's go ahead and take away our rough. All right. So there's our character. And we'll work with these shapes, even though there's more details like the bangs and the eyebrows and the nose and the mouth. We'll just go ahead and work with the shapes we have here so that I can get the principles across. All right. Let's go ahead and make some new colors. And here we go, we've got our colors. Let's close the style editor, select our fill tool, and let's fill our bodysuit. All right, now as you can see, it's detecting all of, these, all of this line work as uh, one sort of piece. So what we're gonna do to overcome that is we'll select our bodysuit and we'll right click and we'll click group. All right, so now this reads as one object to open tunes. And we can click the neck and we'll also group the neck. And we can now that we've grouped it, we can send it back behind the body. And you can do that by default, I believe it's the brackets. Uh, so you can hit the left bracket to lower it in the right bracket to bring it forward within the image file itself. And you can also hold control and hit left bracket and that will send it all the way to the back. And now you can still see it a little bit behind there but that's just because I have the opacity opacity, sorry, set down to 80%. Let's bring it up to 100% while we do this. So now you can see the neck has fallen behind the bodysuit. Now if we select the neck and hold control and hit right bracket, that'll bring it to the top. What we'll go ahead and do is fill it real quick. So let's select our fill tool, add our skin color, boom. All right, let's go ahead and fill the skin on all of our exposed areas. All right, and now once again, these ears and this head are reading as sort of the same bit of line work, the same sort of object if we turn them into their own groups. So we'll group the ear, we'll group this ear. Now you can see the ears fall in front of the head and by using the brackets, we can bring them in front of or behind. You can also do this by right clicking, send back or send backward. And there's the shortcuts right there. So we'll go ahead and send them backward. Actually send them right to the back. We'll do that with both of the ears. All right, now let's fill the eyes. Select our fill tool. Now we can select our eye color and fill our eyes up. Now I want the neck, take my selection tool, I want the neck to fall behind everything. So let's go ahead and send it to the back. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and make a group out of each of these little, uh, appendages, all the hands and feet. And then I'm going to bring them all to the front, selecting them all, bring to front. And that will make more sense why I did that later. Now I'm going to take my select tool and hold shift and select. First I'm going to select my pupil and then I'm going to select my eye and I'm going to right click and group them. So now they move together like this. Whereas before they would move separate like this. So I'm going to undo that. All right. Now that we've got things grouped and at different levels within the image, let's go ahead and bring back our rough. Get started on moving our vector shape into the next position. Now that we've drawn our first key pose, Head on over to the next tutorial by clicking the link below to see how to draw the second key pose and then how to create the automatic in-betweens between those two poses.